Major funding for Backyard Safari is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future. Ah, what a glorious day. Sun shining, barely a cloud in the sky. Great day to catch some rays. At the beach! Uh, on second thought, it's a perfect day for a ride on a sailboat. Hoist the sail, matey. We're casting off. No problem. As my grandpa used to say, there's nothing like a little rainy weather to make the fishing better. I just have one question. Where is all this coming from? Let's go find out. to see on a backyard safari backyard safari don't you want to know more well what are you waiting for backyard safari now's the perfect time come on in the water's fine backyard safari It's right here in your own backyard. Backyard Safari. Backyard Safari. Backyard Safari. <laughs> the weather we experience every day starts way up here in the clouds. like a monkey on its back. Yeah. And there's a shoe. And there's a castle with giant eyes in the middle. There's a dog. The dog's got a hat on. <laughs> I wonder where Bud is today. Oh, there's Goldilocks chasing the three bears. Well, that sort of looks... <laughs> That looked like Celia taking a dive. That was Celia taking a dive. Hi, <laughs> Celia, you okay? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Nice of you to drop by. <laughs> I know, I know, I guess I should have called first. <laughs> but what what are you doing? Well, I'm imagining clouds look like. Uh, See that one? Yeah. What's that look like? Um, I think it looks like a, a flower and a ladybug. Well, a minute ago, that cloud looked like a polar bear and a, and a chicken dancing. Yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. Okay. Ooh, ooh, now it looks like a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex playing playing patty cake. <laughs> you know what? That's the great thing about clouds. They're always changing shape. Sometimes clouds look like they're hanging in the middle of the sky. But you know, if you take a good long look, you'll see that they're always moving and changing shape. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. And, you know, different shaped clouds have their own names. Really? Yeah. Um, low puffy clouds like these, they're called cumulus clouds. Cumulus clouds. Oh. 
Oh, what about those clouds? They look spread out uh, like a gray cover. Well, they're called stratus clouds. Well, they seem like storm clouds to me. <laughs> well, not always. But when it does rain or snow, it's usually from stratus cloud. Ah. Now those clouds look different. They're kind of thin and wispy. Well, they're called cirrus clouds, and they're really high up in the sky. Hmm. Okay, let me see if I can spot different clouds. There's cumulus. Right. And uh, more cumulus. <laughs> yep. Oh, those are definitely cirrus. I can tell because they're kind of skinny and way up high. You're getting pretty good at this. And those are stratus. Hey, where's my umbrella? Look, storm's coming in. <laughs> I think you're right about that, too. Bud? Huh? Do you have a favorite cloud? <laughs> yep. You do? Which one is it? The one I'm going to catch. <laughs> um, Bud? I don't know if you can catch a cloud. You ever tried it? <laughs> well, no, <laughs> but... I... Maybe... Maybe it's just a matter of... Having the right equipment! <laughs> and finding a cloud that's low enough! <laughs> you know, I don't know what it takes to catch a cloud, but I do know what it takes to make a cloud. I found clouds in my own home. Look! Welcome to my bathroom, where I found my sister taking a shower. That's where I saw my first cloud. It seems that when the hot, wet air inside the shower met the cold air outside the shower, a cloud was born. Uh, my sister was a little steamed, <laughs> and so was my hand. There were little drops of water all over it. That means clouds are made of water. Cool, huh? Get out of here! Bye, sis. <laughs> And, uh, hello, everybody. Hi! <laughs> My next cloud sighting was in the kitchen. At the stove, I could see that when the hot air left the teapot and met the cool air in the room, steam shot out of the spout. And the steam reminded me of clouds, too. Since the steam was very hot, I held a glass up to it and look what I saw. The steam was made of tiny drops of water, too, just like in the shower. So, clouds are actually made of millions of tiny drops of water. Pretty amazing, huh? <laughs> I wonder if Bud caught his cloud yet. Well, if you can't catch clouds with a net, try roping them. Oh, there's one! Yo! Well, it looks like I'm gonna need one of two things. More rope, or a faster horse. Ah, there's nothing like a storm to give the place a good cleaning. <laughs> Yes, sir. Hey. Oh! <laughs> Looks like some storm clouds. Uh, you call those storm clouds? I'll show you storm clouds. Uh, grab a seat and hold on to your hat. Now watch this. The storms of our lives. <laughs> hey, what's that grace underneath the clouds? That's what falling rain looks like far away. Look at that cloud. Why is it so dark? Well, the darker the cloud, the more water droplets it holds. And that can mean rain. And here comes that rain. It's really pouring down. That's why it's called a downpour. Take a look at these raindrops. How can those be raindrops? They look as hard as stones. That's why we call them hailstones. Uh, they are actually pieces of ice that fall from the clouds. Hey, look what they did to that car window. They really are as hard as stones. And they form sometimes during thunderstorms. Somebody's gonna need a heavy umbrella for that. An umbrella wouldn't do you any good in this. 
Is that a hurricane? Yep. Hurricanes are huge storms with very strong winds. You ought to stay inside if a hurricane comes blowing your way. Wow, look at that wind! And rain! And wind! Yep, and that rain can cause floods. And that wind can cause plenty of damage. Yes, you were right about that. Those clouds look cold. <laughs> can you guess what those clouds leave behind? It's cold, it's white, and it's beautiful. It's snow, huh? My favorite. Mm, it's a lot of people's favorite. But snowstorms can be dangerous, too. Especially when they mix heavy snow with wind. Wind makes the snow blow all around, and it can be very hard to see. So snowstorms can be dangerous to cars, too. Oh, they sure can. And when it's all over, you gotta dig your way out. <laughs> That's right. But you know, wind can be dangerous all by itself. In a tornado, lots of wind swirls round and round very fast. The air forms a shape called a funnel, which acts like a super strong vacuum cleaner that picks up everything in path. Uh, see those flashes of light? They're electrical lines. Wow, the tornado's breaking them like they were twigs. Yep. Tornadoes are very powerful, and they can be very dangerous. So stay out of their path. That's for sure. Now take a look at these clouds. Ah, fluffy white cumulus clouds. They're usually a sign of nice weather, right? Yep. And that's why we call them fair weather clouds. Hey. Storm blew over. Mm. Clouds are always changing and moving. Sometimes they drop rain or snow on us. And sometimes they just drift by and look pretty. <sighs> I wish I could see those clouds close up. Well, uh, well, do you want to get your head up in the clouds and know more? <laughs> I always want to know more. Then just step out there. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> I guess if I want to get up close to the clouds, an airplane would be a pretty good way to do it, right? I'd be glad to take you up. Hi, Melba. Hi, Celia. <laughs> this is Melba Jackman. She is a pilot, and pilots know all about clouds and, and what they can tell you about the weather. Why is that, Melba? Well, let's go up, and I'll explain it to you. Okay. Woo. I can't believe this. I'm excited. I've never been in a plane this small before. Oh. Yeah, yeah, oh. <laughs> okay, how high are we actually going to get? I think we're going to have to go up to five or six thousand feet to meet the clouds. Five or six thousand feet? That's pretty high. That's like if you put five skyscrapers one on top of the other. That's right. Yeah. Why, why is it like that? Well, 
it has to do with the air moving up and down up there in the sky, and it gives that cloud its shape. So what is a cumulus cloud? Well, all of the clouds are made of little tiny, tiny droplets of water. Right. Millions of tiny droplets of water that are going to be rain before you know it. When rain comes out of the cumulus clouds, that's when you get showers, like a quick rain, and then it stops when the cumulus cloud is passed by. So is it safe to fly through these cumulus clouds? Oh, sure. It's safe to fly through cumulus clouds. You just get a bit of a bumpy ride. Woo! Those are stratus up ahead? That low, flat layer are the kinds of clouds that we call stratus. They look like they're covering the sky. So what do they tell us about the weather? When they're spread out over a wide area and they're kind of dark, generally that's a sign that rain is coming. In the stratus clouds, we get like that long, all-day drizzling kind of rain. Now, look over there, right through, through the blue sky. Can you see those clouds way, 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 way up high? Are those cirrus clouds? Yes, the ones that are very, very high up, very th wispy clouds are the cirrus clouds. Now, can we get to those clouds? Not in this airplane. You need a much bigger, much more powerful airplane to fly that high. What does a cirrus cloud tell us about the weather? Cirrus clouds are not made up of droplets of water like the other clouds. They're made up of tiny particles of ice. Ice? Cirrus clouds usually are indicators that we're now having good weather. And if you can see them, it means that the sky is fairly clear. So I guess being a pilot, you really get to know what clouds are made of, right? Yes, we do. <laughs> and I guess you can also figure out what kind of weather to expect. That's right. Thank you so much for taking me up into the clouds. Well, thank you so much for flying with me today. It was incredible. All right, you clouds. You're not going to come to me. I'm going to go to you. This is not a cloud. You don't have to tell me the grass cam needs rain. Look at the poor thing. It's all dry and crunchy. Oh, thank goodness. Here comes a rain cloud right now. I'm telling you, Sass, it's coming right for us. And now it's going to rain. <laughs> Once again, old Crink's ride is rain. That's better. All charged up and ready to go. To the workshop, that is. <laughs> oh, I have some important people I need to talk to. Looks like my friend Naima is at her weather station. Hi, Naima. Hi, Crinkaroo. What are you measuring? Well, I'm checking the temperature. Uh, how are you doing that? This is a thermometer. Yeah? Uh, how does that work? Well, there's a red line that goes up to a number. The number that it goes up to is the temperature. So the temperature is 80 degrees today. Ooh, pretty warm, I'd say. Uh, what else do you measure the weather with? I have my wind vane. What does it do? Well, it tells me how, how fast or how slow the wind is going, and which direction. So the faster the pinwheel spins, the harder the wind is blowing. Very interesting. What about the R in the window? It's my rain gauge. Uh, why don't you show it to me? So that water in there is what? It's rain. Oh, what are you measuring? Well, I'm measuring how much rain fell into my jar. Uh, let me get a better look at that, Naima. Uh, so how much rain fell today? Less than one inch. Oh, I remember that rainstorm earlier today. It was a doozy. Hey, what were you just looking at in the sky? I was checking the clouds. Why? 
Well, sometimes clouds can tell you how the weather will be. Right you are. It looks like fair weather to me. What do you do with all your measurements? I write it in my notebook. Notebook, huh? Why don't you show it to me? I see. You keep track of the temperature and rain and wind. And how come? Because I love the weather. I understand there's another reason why you like to keep track of the weather. Because I want to be a weather forecaster when I grow up. I have an idea. Do you want to act like you're a TV weather forecaster and present the weather? Sure. Okay. Let's get set up for the forecast. Over to you, Naima. Hello. My name is Naima Coster for Channel 27 News with your local weather report. Today, it will be partly cloudy and 88 degrees, and it will be medium wind. And how about tomorrow? Tomorrow, it will probably be sunny and probably 92 degrees and little wind. Not good for you kite flyers like me. Well, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day and a beautiful weekend. Now, back to you, Crinkaroot. And thank you, Naima, for all the weather tips. Well, time to get going. <laughs> Bye. Clouds not only affect the weather, they can affect the way we feel. A hot day with fair weather clouds can make you long for the shade. Or find a great way to cool off. When snow falls from the clouds, it can slow you down for hours. Or bring you fun all day long. <laughs> Too much rain can not only be dreary, it can be downright dangerous. Now the right amount of rain from clouds helps provide the food we all need to survive. I knew my painting was good, but not that good. But, ah, uh, this wasn't your painting. This was the real thing. Uh-oh. I think it's going to... Hey! Let's get out of here! Get the house! Okay, okay, hey, okay. Get the angel. Oh, all right, I've got it. I'm running. Oh, it. Careful! Woo! Let's go! Woo! Ah! Oh, it's not fair! Ah, okay! This isn't going to fit. I'll put it over here. Okay, okay, wait. Here, take this. Okay, we got it. Woo. Give it to me. Ah! Careful! Hey! Ah! Ah! <laughs> wow! 
I caught a cloud and the cloud caught me. <laughs> when you look at clouds, you can use your imagination to see all kinds of things in them. Uh, here's my friend Bailey with some good ideas on cloud watching. I like to go cloud watching because when I do, I see really neat shapes. I like to find a comfortable spot in the grass. And then, when I do, I lay my blanket out. Look, that cloud's a bear. And that looks like a sneaker. Those look like a big pile of mashed potatoes. <laughs> that looks like a snowball and it's almost melted. Try cloud watching. You never know what's going to float by. All you need to do your own cloud watching is a day with lots of clouds in the sky and lots of imagination in your head. And remember, the best place to learn about nature is right outside your door. Because when you're outside, you're on your own backyard safari. Bye-bye! Safari is a production of Lancet Media Entertainment and is produced in association with the American Museum of Natural History. This episode of Backyard Safari is made possible by a major grant from the National Science Foundation, America's Investment in the Future.